G'day, Patrick Von Rao here, orthopedic surgeon from the Brisbane Hip Clinic. So this presentation is um, going to be upon the topic of when to consider hip surgery. So um, a really important topic because uh, a lot of people will experience the symptoms associated with uh, osteoarthritis of the hip joint for um, uh, quite a long period of time, many years in fact, um, until they get to the point where it's starting to impact enough uh, where they may think that it's time to have a joint replacement done and it's a really um, difficult decision to make uh, for many people. So um, this uh, presentation is designed to be able to give a little bit of guidance around that topic. So a really common question that I get asked in the clinic is is it time for me to have a, a joint replacement done? And um, as a surgeon, uh, that's a, a really difficult question for me to answer um, because it's a really uh, personal decision. And um, really there's only one person who's experiencing the osteoarthritis symptoms and the impact it's having, um, and that's the person themselves. And um, so it's not really a decision that um, can clearly be made by another uh, person, a surgeon or a, uh, a loved one or a relative. Um, it's really got to come from the person themselves. Um, so what they're really doing is they're asking for some guidance. Um, and um, really when you're thinking about uh, the symptoms of osteoarthritis, you need to be thinking about the balancing of um, what you would consider as uh, acceptable symptoms, um, how it's uh, impacting upon your lifestyle, and um, also your um, ability or willingness um, to conduct non-surgical therapies and, um, and how effective they are um, in your management. So osteoarthritis of the hip joint is where the cartilage surfaces of the joint have become worn so that the um, bearing surface over the over the ball of the hip joint and inside the socket has become worn through. And generally we use the term osteoarthritis when that wear is, is pretty significant, uh, where in many cases it's, uh, it's gone down to bone in, in, in reasonably significant sections or areas of the hip joint. So when you see wear like that, the first thing that we said is that the condition is permanent. So um, we can't naturally, our bodies can't naturally, nor can we by other methods regrow that cartilage once the damage has got to a certain degree. So, so we do know that the condition is, is permanent. The other thing to reflect upon is that it is a, a slowly progressive condition. So once it's got worn to a certain point, it won't go backwards, it will only go forwards towards more wear. But that wear is in fact um, often um, pretty slow. Um, and so um, there are some scenarios where the wear can be um, quite quick and accelerated and you can have um, quite a significant deterioration over a short period of time. But generally speaking, most people know about their osteoarthritis wear for quite a period of time before they come to see me. So the, uh, the natural history of osteoarthritis in terms of the, the symptoms that you'll be getting from it um, and in particular pain, um, is one of a, a, a fluctuating and meandering course. So what we tend to find is that uh, there'll be periods of time where symptoms actually might be um, pretty good and then other periods of time where for one reason or another you're experiencing more significant symptoms. So I think when you're thinking about the impact that it's having upon your lifestyle, um, try not to think about when it's really, really good or when it's really, really bad, um, think of it as an average. So how has this affected my lifestyle? What sort of things do I find difficult now? Um, what sort of physical pursuits and activities um, have I needed to reduce or alternatively um, eliminate from my, from my lifestyle because of this condition? Um, so I think it's more useful to think of it as a, as generally how your symptoms are rather than focusing on when it's good and when it's bad. When thinking about surgery for the management of osteoarthritis, it's useful to consider what sort of surgery are we talking about. And so generally when we're talking about surgical procedures that are used for the management of cartilage disorders within the joint, we break 
those surgeries into two main groups. Um, that is arthroscopy surgery, which is um, keyhole, minimally invasive, uh, camera-style operation where we just trim a small piece of cartilage um, or repair it or stabilise it or whatever needs to be done by a minimally invasive method. Or we talk about arthroplasty surgery as the other alternative. And arthroplasty surgery is some form of artificial device. For instance, like a, a, a conventional total hip replacement or a, a hip resurfacing device. So that's where you've got an artificially manufactured um, device which will compensate or, or replace the, the, um, the damaged cartilage within the joint. So um, for the management of established osteoarthritis, um, it's very seldom, very seldom where we would recommend an arthroscopy procedure. And the reason being is that arthroscopy procedures, um, whilst they are really useful for people who have got isolated small sections of cartilage wear within the joint, they're not at all really all that effective for the management of more generalised or established osteoarthritic wear. In those cases, arthroscopy surgery is um, consistently fairly ineffective. Um, and so if we were going to be talking about surgery for the management of osteoarthritis, pretty much most times we're going to be talking about an arthroplasty procedure. So arthroplasty procedures for the management of uh, hip osteoarthritis are, are broken into um, two main groups. There's total hip replacement and there's hip resurfacing procedures. Um, and um, both of these options um, have merit. Within each of these groups, there are in fact um, quite a number of different alternatives. Um, and so um, when we're speaking to someone about um, which joint replacement we may be considering for the management of their hip osteoarthritis, we'll be talking about an individualised um, uh, plan based on uh, uh, quite a number of factors. For instance, um, the density of the bone and the shape and the size uh, of the bone um, of the hip joint. Um, uh, factors uh, that are related to the, the person themselves, for instance, their, their, their age, uh, any um, medical um, comorbidities or other health problems that may be present, um, and also their um, lifestyle expectations. What sort of activities um, are they likely to re-engage in after their joint replacement um, or resurfacing has been done? As a surgeon, the types of features that I'm looking for to be able to assess um, uh, whether a person is ready for a, a joint replacement for their hip osteoarthritis is these. So um, firstly, I'm, I want to be able to assess that the person's got established um, cartilage wear within their joint, so it needs to be pretty significantly worn. Um, the second is that the person has to be experiencing um, fairly significant symptoms. Um, it, it doesn't necessarily have to be uh, like white knuckle, 10 out of 10 pain, um, but it needs to be um, symptoms that are significant enough that they're um, interfering with um, function um, and um, impacting upon quality of life. So unable to do those pursuits which are uh, important to that person on a day-to-day -a -a -day basis. Uh, and then the last thing is I want to be, uh, be clear as to whether or not the condition can be um, adequately um, managed by non-surgical therapies. So um, if a person has, um, for instance, more mild symptoms um, and um, their cartilage wear is a little less, um, there's probably a greater chance that we can we can make a, a worthwhile impact upon those symptoms without resorting to surgery. Now, there are a, a number of um, frequently asked questions that I have uh, in relation to considering hip surgery. And the first one relates to age, um, both on the extremes of um, really young people who have established arthritis and also the, the older folk as well. Um, so um, young people with osteoarthritis, uh, in fact, um, forms a really 
big part of my practice. Uh, I see quite a lot of young people with um, various grades of osteoarthritis all the way through from like small cartilage tears all the way through to joint completely worn out. Generally, if you're younger and you've got established osteoarthritis at the hip joint, um, you've often got a reason for it. So um, that can be really easily identified. For instance, a, a childhood or adolescent hip joint problem like dysplasia or perthes disease, you've had some sort of traumatic event or something like that. Occasionally, we will see um, quite young people who have what we call idiopathic or primary osteoarthritis where we, we can't really detect a clear reason, um, but their cartilage has become worn nonetheless. Now, um, Young people are a challenge, um, and the reason being is that um, uh, obviously there's more years to live. And so if you perform a, a joint replacement in a younger person, the likelihood of them requiring a revision or a redo operation within their lifespan um, becomes higher just numerically because they've got more years to live. Now, having said that, um, in modern practice, our bearing surfaces for joint replacement, which traditionally have been the things that have sort of worn through and limited their um, longevity, particularly in higher activity demand patients, have become really, really durable. Um, and we also have a, a number of different um, designs of joint replacement, both um, hip replacement and also hip resurfacing, which can um, preserve bone and um, potentially uh, give us an advantage in terms of uh, should the joint replacement need to be redone within the future. So, um, so we do quite a lot of joint replacements in younger folk. Um, it does represent a risk factor for failure within the lifespan. Um, and so, um, but age uh, per se is not necessarily a, uh, a factor that would um, mean that you can't have a joint replacement. So uh, a lot of people sort of have sort of a number in their mind. They say, well, I can't have a joint replacement until I'm 65 and I'm 30 now. So I've got like 35 years of intractable severe hip pain um, uh, to be able to ride through. And um, it's just simply not practical. And so um, the decision to undertake a joint replacement is important to any person, um, regardless of their age. Um, and uh, I think that really um, the principles and the general guidance as to when to do the joint replacement doesn't really change relating to a younger person's age. So if you've got established joint wear, you've got significant symptoms, it's interfering with your function and impacting on quality of life, and it's not adequately responsive to non-surgical therapies, um, then I think that really... Um, given that you know what the natural history of osteoarthritis is of a permanent condition which is slowly progressive, um, then I think that the decision to go to a joint replacement for the management of osteoarthritis in that younger person um, actually is um, um, a little bit easier. The, obviously, you don't want to go ahead with a joint replacement earlier than you need to. And so in a younger person, um, we would be counselling them to be uh, a little bit more proactive in the non-surgical space um, in the initial instance, uh, because uh, what we can find is often we can get people to a, a reasonable level of function that they're pretty happy with and they can buy them some extra time before going ahead with definitive therapy. The other question that I get asked is relating to joint replacement in older folk. Um, so older folk are, um, uh, are more likely to have um, comorbidities. So they're the people who have other health concerns that may uh, pose a, a threat in terms of risk associated with the surgery or the anesthesia. Um, and in this case, um, a lot of people who are um, coming to me with osteoarthritis ask me, um, shouldn't it be best that I have my joint replacement done maybe now, even though my symptoms aren't too bad because I'm only getting older? Um, and I understand that line of thought. Um, uh, and indeed, sometimes, depending on the level of the symptoms, that's actually a very rational thing to go ahead with. Um, what I would say, though, is that um, we don't 
recommend nor condone the conduct of what I'd probably term a prophylactic joint replacement. So one which is done before you need to have it done on the basis of your symptoms. So um, um, the person who comes to me with uh, established osteoarthritis that's starting to give them some mild symptoms um, is likely to respond to some non-surgical therapies. And that indeed um, may be enough given their degree of activity and lifestyles that they have, uh, particularly if they have other medical conditions uh, which are precluding higher grade physical pursuits. So I hope that you found this uh, presentation really useful. Um, if you'd like to read more around the topic, uh, we've got a lot of information on our website at brisbanehipclinic.com.au. Have a great day.